Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to look at the final review of Linux Mint Debian Edition. And of course, I installed this on my main media PC. Now, this is the computer that I use to play media files and just kind of do random stuff throughout the day. It's not my main work computer, but it kind of serves as a general backup for anything and everything I might need to do, which might need a... I'm usually using it to play uh, media files, movies, music, things like that, YouTube videos, uh, but I also might use it for communication, so I use Skype on that. Um, I do some email as needs be, primarily Thunderbird, which checks my non-business accounts, and then I have Evolution for my business accounts, though I don't necessarily use uh, Evolution quite as much on this one. Uh, of course, I schedule my videos. I will do uh, some work with GIMP so I can... Uh, build some different uh, thumbnails and things like that. And so that's kind of the purpose of this computer. Um, of course, I already did the uh, installation and setup. I'll refer you to those videos. Uh, but briefly, uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition has two different installers, but I did have some problems installing it no matter which installer I needed to do. I had to use the disks tool in order to format the drive before I could install it. For whatever reason, it not clear a disk and then write over it with uh, with the installer, either one of them. Of course, it comes with your main uh, Debian installer, and I forget the name of that one, and it also comes with Calamaris. Um, so you have the choice between which of those. Now, of course, I, uh, I use Cinnamon on this, uh, and that is the only desktop environment that is uh, officially available in Linux Mint Debian Edition, although in theory you should be able to install some other ones. Maybe we'll explore that down the road. Um, of course, Cinnamon is my preferred desktop. I have my quick launch bars set up. I can see the tasks of everything that I have here, uh, very easy to access. And then um, I have my, uh, you know, my, my system manager tools like that, my basic menu. I did actually find in working with this that while this is absolutely the desktop I'm most productive in, it's not my favorite desktop for the media PC or I generally like the Budgie, I like the KDE. Uh, just things that are a little bit more untraditional because it's not the standard type of stuff I generally do. And this is the computer where I experiment with different desktop environments. So if this were set up in a production environment where I'm doing my web design work or uh, other intensive coding, maybe writing, researching, I definitely want to use Cinnamon, but I don't necessarily want to use it for all the media stuff. It's not like it's bad, it's just, a little bit boring for that format. Uh, but that being said, Cinnamon is still my favorite desktop, probably with KDE and Budgie fighting for number two and three respectively. And then there's some other ones that fall in behind that. Of course, on Linux Mint, some people asked about what is your difference between Linux Mint Debian Edition and Debian running Cinnamon. I addressed that in a completely separate video. I'll refer you to that. Uh, briefly, you have your Linux Mint tools. Uh, so if you were to look for uh, various things like USB Writer, uh, these are tools that come with Linux Mint that are on Linux Mint Debian Edition but are not on Debian with Cinnamon. The other major thing is that your term uh, we could access this to the terminal, but uh, through our sources, actually, we might be able to get to it another place as well. Um, what you'll notice in the sources here is that um, the uh, non-free and contributor repositories are also enabled. I'm not sure it's going to be in here or not. Now we can't see it in here. Um, we'd have to go into the terminal to show you the, the sources list. Uh, the Linux Mint Debian Edition does not have the non-free and the contributor resources on uh, installed by default, uh, but you can enable them, in which case if you're using a system like this one, which has a an integrated AMD uh, GPU, you actually need to enable those in order to not get a lot of screen tearing, which I have not had any issues. So out of the box, simple install, Linux Mint Debian Edition is going to support a little bit wider range of hardware. Um, we do have flat packs installed, of course, with the software application uh, or the software uh, manager in Linux Mint does contain Flatpak by default. So if you are into Flatpaks, you can do that. Uh, it does not contain snappy packages by default, but it is running Debian Stretch, so you can install them if you do want those. 
So those are some of the things that, that we see in Linux Mint Debian Edition. As far as while we're in the Software Manager, nearly everything I needed to use on a regular basis is in here. Um, so the installation or the programs I installed, um, I think I installed GIMP. I can't remember if that's installed by default. It might be. Um, I installed Chromium, which is what I use for YouTube. I installed Skype. Uh, I think Thunderbird came pre-installed. I did install Evolution. I installed PDF Shuffler, which is one of the things that I use to manage PDFs. I installed Kodi, and I believe I installed Audacity as well, and Kid3, all of which I use to manage media files. And I installed Simple Screen Recorder, which is what I'm using to record the video now. Those are the main tools I would use. I think I could also install Spotify from this as well. Um, I didn't test that. I don't use Spotify a lot. Yes, so I can through FlatHub. Um, I don't use Spotify a lot, but I did use it. I did install it on the last build that I had because I was testing how my podcasts look in Spotify. And so I could install pretty much the entire range of software that I wanted to use. Of course, it is running the Linux Mint, uh, excuse me, the Debian Stretch repository. So it does not have the latest and greatest software. You'll see we still have GIMP 2.8 and we are still going to have a uh, uh, five branch of LibreOffice. Uh, neither of which really bothers me on this. If I really wanted those, I could install them. I do have a separate video showing you how to install the uh, latest packages on Linux Mint Debian Edition. So I'll refer you to that video. As far as my purposes, my takes, everything was perfectly fine. I was able to import all of my settings uh, for the applications that I use for this computer from my mobile home system uh, very easily. Um, I will say that media does not run quite as well. So if I were to boot up any individual um, video, so for example, if we look at the video uh, we have here after we finish this ad, um, what you would notice after playing a video, and we may or may not be able to see it, but uh, more frequently on this distro than you find in other ones is that we will get the familiar audio stutter that I've encountered. And this actually does show up on this no matter if I'm on Kodi, if I'm on VLC, if I am on just on YouTube, or if I am on uh, view.yahoo.com, which is what I, I access from Firefox. So it's not as good as a media PC. I personally don't care if it stutters every few minutes a little bit. Uh, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. Some people it might. Uh, for those looking for a distro that does not do that stutter, um, Deepin did not, Solace does not, and actually anything from the Ubuntu 18.04 branch may not do it. I probably want to test that. Uh, in fact, I might run Ubuntu 18.10 on this next just to uh, get an experience with that, and I want to see if that has the same, uh, same results or not. Of course, the other distro that has not given me that media, uh, media stutter was Elementary OS. So if you are looking exclusively for media, one of those other ones might be better for you. Elementary, Solace, Ubuntu, anything in the Ubuntu 1804 and above, um, and uh, Deepin, of course, uh, which is based on um, Debian testing now, I believe. So that was my issue with media. I do get those familiar system settings, but everything is installed out of the box. Now this does not install your media codecs, but if you go into your sound and video after install, you will have an item here uh, in your menu to install the multimedia codecs. So go to sound and video. You'll see that since it's already installed, it removes itself from the menu, uh, which is, which is kind of nice because I forgot that I needed to install those, but you go into your sound and sound and, uh, and audio things, it's right there for you. So it's easy to spot. As far as the system itself, it was very nice to have a platform that's very snappy and fast. Um, that's something that I didn't, I didn't experience as much on Deepin and I didn't realize it. Uh, but after running Deepin for nearly six weeks, the Deepin desktop environment split between Deepin OS and Manjaro Deepin, um, what I found is that running Cinnamon, the system is absolutely snappy. It's very fast. Of course, that little system weight was because this is actually accessing on my network shares, not on the actual uh, files themselves. So you can see this guy does run very quickly. Uh, it's fast, it's snappy, and I had zero issues. And uh, this computer is not exactly the greatest. Uh, let me show you the system information. 
Uh, this is, it's just, I mean, a $300 Lenovo computer from a long time ago. Uh, six gigs of RAM. It has, um, let's see if I can find the processor, AMD A8 5500. Uh, oh, with Radeon H, uh, integrated graphics. I didn't. I uh, did not know it was a Radeon. Uh, well, I guess I did. Um, uh, let's see. Graphics card, of course. Uh, this is what we have. So uh, we had to. Uh, you do have to install the non um, non free drivers in Debian. That's what this system does right out of the box. As far as my system bugs I've encountered, nothing super major. Um, I did still have to adjust the sound configuration. Uh, basically, if you pull up certain applications, Kodi being the biggest one that I noticed a problem with, and I think also with VLC, uh, if I would boot those systems up, it would max out the volume. So the fix for that is to go into your sound configuration, um, switch your flat volumes to no, and uncomment the field. I mentioned that in another video, and I will reference that here. That fixes it. That's still not repaired on Linux Mint Debian Edition, but I'm used to that, fixing that from the other times that I run Debian. Um, Chromium has an interesting little bug. If I were to go into Chromium and, for example, uh, go in and do a live streaming video test, um, what I would encounter is that I cannot actually install a, uh, a thumbnail. So I'll just go ahead and show you the errors. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll just do it as a, as a private event just because I don't want it to show up in the feed while I'm recording the video. Go ahead and hit my Create Event. And what we are going to see is after it gets me my next screen where I can choose my, um, I can choose my um, stream key and I can choose my thumbnail. If I go to install a thumbnail, then it will actually fail. Okay, so here we are, thumbnail. Now, it will be pulling the basic thumbnail from the channel by default, but if I want to grab, for example, this one here, go to update, I get this error here, uh, which is probably because, as some people report, there seem to be some libraries missing, either from Debian or from Linux Mint Debian Edition. So the only workaround I found for this is when I need to install a thumbnail uh, after I'm, I'm posting a video, I actually go into Firefox. I can do it through, through Firefox without a problem. Not that Firefox is not without its issues because another funny, quirky little bug is that um, I cannot seem to enter a pass, uh, enter a um, URL and then just hit the enter key. It actually worked for me that time, but it usually does not do it. Let me do this. It's going to make a liar out of me now. I know it. Okay, so I just typed that in and hit enter, and it was not want me to enter that. And I'm not sure if it's because, maybe it's because there's the www in there. Um, let's go ahead and try it without. So, see, I'm going in, I'm hitting the enter, and I can't. So the workaround is I have to hit my space, back up, and then hit enter. So that seems to be a little bug that I've never seen before. Um, and it uh, it has been a bug on multiple versions of Firefox. I did upgrade Firefox a couple times. I uninstalled and reinstalled Firefox to see if that would fix it. Just a tiny little bug, not like something that would be like, oh, don't use the system. But it certainly is a quirky little thing. So those are really the only bugs that I found working on it. Overall, the experience is very positive. I still really like Linux Mint. Um, Linux Mint Debian Edition is is very solid outside of the, the fairly minor little bugs there. And eh, maybe I could figure out how to resolve those, but I don't know. Um, overall, the experience is very good. It works well. And if the Ubuntu-derived flavor of Linux Mint went away, I probably wouldn't have a problem running this. Uh, it would certainly be in my list of things if uh, if the basic Ubuntu-based Linux Mint was not available. So that is uh, that is my thoughts on this. Let me know what your thoughts have been on Linux Mint Debian Edition, and did I miss anything in this brief little review? So thanks for watching the video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.